That is why midnight prayer don't joke with it. We need to take territories for Jesus. We need to advance. We need to arise and fight. And when we are fighting, we are taking over the land. What is destroying many churches and taking power out of many churches is fornication. I can assure you that for singing, they know how to sing. For worship, they know how to worship. But their bodies are not temples. When you come out of the world into church, into Christ, your face, your nose remains the same, but your heart is changed. Your head remains the same, but your mind is changed. Your body remains the same, but your attitude is changed. Attitude of the world is entering the church and there. Pride has entered the church so much that you cannot even talk to a minister. You cannot advise a minister. You cannot correct a Christian that, no, this is not right. This is not good. You have to do this to please your God. And they want to do whatever they want to do in the house of God and they call it grace. Now, I'm talking about what I call good fight. Amen. Amen. Good fight. It is a good fight. There is a fight that the Bible calls good. And this is the time and season for you to wage war and fight the good fight. The Bible said fight the good fight. It means that there is a fight that is good. Now, last week, Sunday, I began talking about something, and I'm going to uh, just introduce that, and I begin to preach. And it was something the Lord laid on my heart strongly many years ago when we went to Tamale to uh, have a campus crusade. And in John chapter 18, verse number 33 to verse 37, the Bible said, that Jesus was brought before Pilate. And Pilate is a heathen king. Jesus is the king of kings. Jesus is the son of God. Now, when, Pilate, when Jesus was brought before Pilate, Pilate looked at him and said, are you a king? There is something about kings. It takes kings to know. And it takes kings to see. He met Jesus for the first time. Then he looked at Jesus and asked him, are you a king? Then he said, your people are, are, have brought you to me. And Jesus looked at him and said, my kingdom is not here. Pilate answered, am I a Jew, thy own nation and chief priest? have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Verse number 36. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servant fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Amen. Verse 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Are thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. So Pilate looked at Jesus and realized that he recognized something about him. He said, are you a king? Now he wondered why a king was delivered to him. Because kings, the Bible said the word, where the word of a king is, there is power. Every king has a subject and the subject fights for him. So you see nations going to war, but the president is not at the forefront. The president is at his home and then giving instructions. Then you will see a people fighting for the president or fighting for the king because where the word of the king is, there is power. Every king has subjects and the subjects are willing to die for the king. And Pilate wondered that I have seen a king but nobody is willing to fight for him. Jesus has seen the battle of Revelation chapter 12. The Bible said, verse 7 going, there was a war in heaven. And Jesus was, I mean, he's enthroned in heaven from eternity to eternity. And the devil rose up against Jesus. The Bible said Jesus never lifted a finger. The Bible said Michael and his angels fought in heaven. 
And the Bible said, are the angels not ministering spirits? In other words, are they not servants? So angels are called to serve. And Satan rose up against the leadership or rulership of the king. The Bible said Michael and his angels fought. And the Bible said there was no place found for the devil. And the Bible said they fought and did not love their lives. So in heaven, when the devil rose up, the Bible said Michael and his angels fought. Now here is Jesus on earth. The Jews rose up against him. And he said, my kingdom is not here. Because wherever the kingdom is, the servants must fight. If the kingdom is there, the servants must fight. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If, they, if my kingdom were here, they will fight and they will not cause me to be delivered unto the Jews. So when Jesus died and Jesus rose up, he could have gone, he, he could have, I mean, uh, gone to heaven the first day, showed himself to the Father. But Jesus said, no, I need to put a people together. I need to put a people together. I need to set up a kingdom on earth so that they will war after. They will war for me. They will fight everything that will rise up against me. So when Jesus rose from the dead, the second, the following day was not ascension. He said, go tell Peter and my brothers that I am risen. And Jesus said, wait here and be endued with power. So he set up a kingdom on earth. Mark chapter 9 verse number 1, the Bible said, many of you here will not die until you see the kingdom. You will not die. Some of you here will not die until you see the kingdom of God come with power. So Jesus' agenda on earth was to establish a kingdom. Because wherever there is a kingdom, the subjects fight for the king. Wherever there is a kingdom, the servant fights for the king. Hallelujah. Now look at the political parties. If you are not careful and you don't know who is standing beside you and you talk against a certain political party, you, you, I mean, you can receive a slap. Because in every kingdom, there are people that fight. So Jesus established the church on earth as the people who will rise and fight for the cause of the king. And today I came to call warriors. I came to call people that will fight. I came to call people that will rise up and fight for the cause of the kingdom. Now listen to me. Many people have caused shipwreck attempting to fight the battles of God with intellect. Attempting to fight with their skill. Attempting to fight with their strength. And they have failed. They have failed. The Bible said, Jesus was on Mount Gethsemane with Peter, John, and James. Then in the verse number 40 of Matthew 26, Jesus, the Bible said Jesus went to pray. Then he came back and found them sleeping. Matthew 26 verse number 40. And he told them that, pray, he finded them asleep and said unto them, what? You could not watch with me for one hour. Verse number 40, 44. Go to verse number 44. The Bible said he came back and he left them, went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words, verse 45. Then come to the disciples and saith unto them, sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. Now the same scripture is in Luke chapter 22, verse number 46. The Bible said when Jesus came and he saw them sleeping, he said, See, why sleep ye? Rise and pray, lest ye enter into temptation. If you don't pray, if you don't fight in prayer, you will enter into temptation. Many people have ignored prayer and attempted to fight the battles of life with their strength. Why was Peter sleeping? 
Why did Peter sleep in a time like that? Because he had a knife in his pocket. In a time like that, why could he sleep? He had a knife in his pocket. The Bible said in Luke 26 verse 50, 51, the Bible said that when they came to arrest Jesus, Peter took, he took a knife, Matthew 26 verse 51, he took a knife and cut the ear of the servant of the high priest. And he was sleeping, he knew that the time was not good. Jesus was sorrowful, he told them that the hour has come. Jesus was sorrowful because he knew that something was coming. And he told them, and he said, I am extremely sorrowful. So they all knew that something terrible was coming. The Bible said on the last supper, Jesus told them that I will not eat of this with you. So they knew something was coming. But Peter took knife. He took a sword. So Matthew 26, 51, the Bible said, behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and smooth of his ear. He could sleep in a time of trouble because he trusted in his sword. He trusted in his sword. The Bible said that the same scripture, John 18 verse 10 and 11, the Bible said John 18, 10, uh, John chapter 18 verse 10, it was Peter and the servant's name was Marcus. So the Bible said he drew the sword, cut the ear of Marcus. So Peter could sleep because he had a sword. Listen to me. There is a sword that cuts ear. But that sword will perish in your hand. That sword could cut the ears of the servant. But Jesus said in the verse number 52 of Matthew 26, he said, put the sword back into the sea because the, the sword will perish in your hand. Is that in your Bible? Put again the sword in its place for all those that take the sword shall perish with the sword. It will perish in your hand. If you try to fight life battles, fight demons with your academic qualifications, listen, the certificate will perish in your hands. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If you try to fight satanic works with your skill, that skill will perish in your hand. There is a sword that perish, a sword that perisheth. That is the sword that cuts ears, the sword of men. It will perish in your hand. But the Bible says there is a sword. The Bible said Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 6. In fact, verse number 14, going, having done all to stand. The Bible said, stand therefore. Then he said, in, uh, in, in describing putting on the whole armor, he said, above all, above all, taking the shield of faith. And the Bible said, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Then he said, praying with all kinds of prayer. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a sword called the word of God. And if you take the, the word of God, the Bible said, it is the sword of the spirit. It is the sword of the spirit. And you can wage a good war with the sword which is in the hand of the spirit because your adversaries are spirits. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Your adversaries are spirits. And you, have, you, are, you are fighting with a, a, a sword that was made somewhere, I mean, in... Uh, uh, Somewhere around here, uh, I could carry or somewhere, uh, just a Hallelujah. There is a sword of the spirit. The Bible said, take the sword of the spirit and then begin to wage war with it. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The Bible said, the flesh profited nothing. Now, you know, life battles. Let me just give an example. Maybe you have a stature. You have strong, you have muscles, you have a good fist. And you think that, I mean, you can beat up a little witch or something like that, something little, and you can use your strength. And sometimes maybe your voice is loud. 
they will take you down by surprise. They will take you down. You, um, you won't even believe it. Amen. Because the Bible said the flesh profited nothing. And I said nothing means what? Nothing. No, nothing means zero. Nothing means zero. So the flesh profited zero. If you want to fight with this flesh, you will have a profit. But the profit is zero. The flesh profited nothing. But the Bible said, these words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Hallelujah. You will hold your life. You will keep your life with the word of God. If you fight with the word of God, you will keep your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The next thing that I want to introduce before I, st I start preaching is that what God, the weapon that God gave us, God did not give us AK-47. He gave us our mouth, our lips. Don't keep quiet. This sword is released by the word of your mouth. A closed mouth means a closed destiny. Never keep quiet because the weapon of the spirit is released by the tongue. The weapon of the spirit is released by the tongue. It's released by the tongue. That is why there is no every spiritual person in the Bible you see, they don't hold their peace. They talk. They release their words. Acts chapter 23, verse number 3, in fact, 2 and 3. Verse number 2, the Bible said, the high priest, in fact, verse number 1, when Paul started introducing himself, the high priest commanded the, those who stood by him, smite him. And the Bible said, where did they smite? The high priest Ananias commanded them that stood by him to smite him on the mouth. They want to keep him shut because Paul was about to speak. And they, he didn't want Paul to use his mouth because they know what could come out of the mouth. And the verse number three, the Bible said, Then said Paul unto him, God shall smite thee. He did not keep quiet. They smoothed him out his mouth and he said, God will smite you. He began to talk. Listen, the day you stop talking, that day you will perish. The Bible said, in Isaiah chapter 53, they led him as a lamb and he openeth not his mouth. This is Jesus. The day Jesus decided not to talk, the Bible said they killed him. They will arrest Jesus and they will take him to the pinnacle of the city. He will come out of them. His brothers will rise up against him and he will tell them, my time is not up. Hallelujah. The day he, be, he decided to keep quiet, he died. So the weapon that God has given us in the spirit is released by the mouth. It's released by the tongue. Let nothing hold back your lips. Let nothing hold back your tongue to wage a good war. Hallelujah. On this premise, I can begin to preach. Now I want to talk about seven fights that you must fight. As seven good fights. That you need to fight. I have established that Jesus came to set up a kingdom. And in this kingdom, we war. You cannot rely on your strength or your abilities or your skill to wage a good war. You cannot rely on it. When Jesus was on Mount Gethsemane praying, the Bible said angels came to worship him, to strengthen him. One was sleeping, Peter. He was sleeping. When he rose up, he drew a sword. But if you read downwards, I mean, Matthew 26 is a very powerful chapter. Verse number 69, the Bible said that a damsel, it was a damsel, three people came to Peter. Number one, a damsel. A damsel came to him and he said, you are one of his disciples. He said, no, I'm not one of them. The sword was in the packet. A damsel. Number two, a maid. Verse number 71. A maid came to him and said, you are one of them. He said, no, I don't know. 
Verse number three, the Bible says someone who stood by him. The, the Bible said he swore. You see, it was not a Roman soldier who told Peter that you are one of them. I mean, he would have collapsed. It was a damsel and a maid and someone who was just standing there. Because when men were praying, he was sleeping on his sword. And he thought that the sword could deliver him. He got to a place, he forgot about the sword. He said, I don't know him. They said, your speech betrays you. He, the Bible said he swore to them, I have never seen this man before. When we are praying and you love to sleep, they said, a time will come that you will be even afraid before people, I mean young, young people, you'll be afraid. You are, you'll be afraid. Amen. You'll be afraid. You can't even lift up your hands. And that is why you need to pray. That is why you need to wage war. So number one, you need to fight the fight of faith. I'm talking about seven things if time permits me. The fight of faith. First Timothy chapter 5, 6 verse number 12. The fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. My God. Fight the good fight of faith. You need to fight for your faith. The devil is coming after your faith. If Satan cannot take your faith, he cannot kill you. Listen, every person dies from within. Life is lived from within. Everyone dies from within. If you don't hold on to faith within, you will lose the life that you have. And that is why the devil is coming after your faith. All the things you're facing and around you, what is the devil trying to tell you? No, this is not important. Don't believe in this. Don't believe, don't have faith and confidence in this. No, you are too smart so that you will not believe. And many people who do not believe are religious. It will surprise you to know that in the church, many people don't believe in Jesus. In the church. Many people don't, do not believe. Recently, I was sitting down and I was thinking, ah, what is, I mean, there's another word that you say, everybody knows is a Christian. Another name for the church or Christian is called believers. So we call us what? Believers. So if you don't believe, what are you doing in, in church? Hallelujah. Because we are called believers. So it means we believe. What do we believe? If the Bible says that Jesus can heal you, we believe. We are believers. If the Bible says that you will prosper, we believe. If the Bible says you will not die, we believe. We are believers. So if you don't believe, what are you doing in Jesus? Hallelujah. How many believers are here? How many believers? So it means that we have been called to believe all things in Christ. All things in Christ. Everything in Christ. And the devil is coming after that very thing. So that you will not believe. And you'll be religious. Oh, I'm in this denomination. And this and that. Oh no, for this one, I have to deal with it this way. But if it comes to, yes, singing, yes, I believe that when I'm singing, I'm praising God. But when I'm doing things like this, I need to see someone else who is more intelligent or more skillful. The Bible said, fight the good fight of faith. If you fight the good fight of faith, you will lay hold of something called eternal life. I came to speak over somebody's life today may you lay hold may you lay hold of eternal life may you lay hold of eternal life in the name of Jesus let nothing take away your faith in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus let it never be said in your life 
that you once believed but you will believe to the very end in the name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah amen fight the good fight of faith fight it because the devil is after your faith the devil is after your faith he's after if he can do anything for you not to believe the devil who can keep you in church and can he wants to keep you in church but keep you out of faith because faith is the realm of possibilities faith is the realm faith is what brings the supernatural things into mani manifestations faith transports the manifest works of God from the realm of the spirit to the realm of the physical so if you don't have faith you won't see what God has provided it's already provided the provision has been made everything has been made but it is your faith that will transport it into your life and that is why the devil is after your faith I have seen people who know how to pray but they don't believe what they have prayed about go to churches across nations let us pray everybody will clap your, their hands and pray some, some, with fervency but the Bible said when you pray believe that you will receive so for praying people can pray but they don't believe in what they are praying for sometimes they go to God and when they are praying they know that no this, this prayer is too big for God this one here is too big for God or when we are praying in church they, they, they do selective prayer because when the topic comes for them to pray they say no for this it's not my level they don't believe in it but the Bible said when you pray believe it when you pray, believe it. If you don't believe in what you are praying about, you are wasting energy. You're wasting strength. You're wasting your time. When you pray, believe it. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. The Bible said, with God, all things are possible. Then the Bible said, all things are possible to him that believes. All things are possible to him that believes. I speak in the name of Jesus. Over somebody's life. Let impossibilities be turned to possibilities. Tonight in the name of Jesus. I speak to one that believes. That let every impossibility in your life. Be turned to possibilities. In the name of Jesus. My God, my God. The Bible said, 1 John 5, 4. The Bible said, He that is born of God overcometh the world. And the Bible said, And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. What is the Bible saying? God is saying that what you believe will overcome what you see. Hallelujah. What you see before you, what you believe in your heart, will overcome what you see in front of you. And today I pray in the burden, in the difficulty, in the challenge, in the opposition, by the power of the name of Jesus, let your faith overcome it. May you have victory. May you have an upper hand in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Go no skinny Mahaya. Listen. I believe that I believe and I believe that I believe and I believe. I spoke to God. I said, Lord, I believe. I believe. Then I said, I consecrate my body unto Christ. I, I consecrate this body unto Christ. It will not be a specimen on doctor's table. Amen. I consecrate this body unto Christ. Listen, if you believe that God is able, then He is able. God can do whatever you believe He can do. God is only limited in your life by your faith. He is limited in your life by your faith. And that is why the devil is coming for your faith. So the Bible said, fight it. Fight it. How does the, 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 
when the devil speaks to you or the devil fights, the fight of faith in your mind. In your mind. Sometimes whisperings. Sometimes suggestions from people. Sometimes, I mean, you are trying to believe and a friend will just pass by and drop a news on a word. You are trying to believe something. Sometimes the devil will try to, 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 to scare you with things. Oh, you hear that someone has died with a symptom that you know. So the devil will try to scare you and the devil, the, the devil will try to speak to your mind. And the Bible said, fight it. Fight it. You will hear the voice in your mind. Say, Satan, not me. My case is different. What kill others cannot kill me. Amen. What destroy others cannot destroy me. Amen. And you tell the devil, you tell the devil, you have no power. No power. I was sitting down, I was meditating on the scripture. And I said, the devil is like an actor. You see, he has no power. The Bible said he roars like a lion. So it means that he's acting like a lion. So he's one of the best actors you can ever know. More than the Hollywood stars. The devil is far more because he's not a lion, but he can act like a lion. So he's an actor. Hallelujah. He can, he, he can come to you and let you, see, I mean, uh, see a picture of how powerful he is. But he's acting. Who has ever watched a movie before? An American movie? No, a Chinese movie. You see one Chinese man flying and kicking this and kicking one. And 2,000 people will be coming. And sometimes they will jump and fly as if they don't get tired. But, and you see, some of the people who, uh, I mean, act those uh, scenes or movies, they can't even win World Away Championship. One match, they can't even win it. But if you see them in a movie, they are the strongest people on earth. Because they are acting strength, but they are not strong. They are acting superhuman, but they are not superhuman. And that is how the devil is. And he does that so that he will weaken your faith. So the Bible said it's like the, uh, uh, Father Christmas, those who dress like Father Christmas. They are big. But it's cotton, cotton inside of them. They are not actually really big. It's the clothing. So if you don't rise up to them and fight, you will see them as big and powerful. So that is how the fight of faith is. You tell the devil you are an actor. You have no power. You've lost the battle. Get out of here. You've lost the battle. You say it to his face. You've lost the battle. You have no power. You have no power. And you are fighting these battles in your mind. Satan, get off. I am a son of God. Get off me. I'm a son of God. I believe it. I will do well. I will prosper. You are saying it in your mind. You are saying then you begin to say it with your lips. You begin to say it with your tongue. I will prosper. I will not be a left out. I will prosper. I, I, I'm not sick. I cannot be sick. You are saying things like that and you are fighting by so doing. I told you that the weapons that God gave us is not a, a, a chemical weapons. It's our mouth. And you are releasing it through the power of your mouth. That, oh, I believe I am a son of God. I believe that I'm a son of God. I am redeemed of the Lord. Satan, you have no place here. Light and darkness have nothing in common. I am in the kingdom of light and you have no power over me. And by that, you are overcoming the battles of the enemy. It's a fight of faith. Fight of faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Sometimes too, they come to you as friends. And they will attempt to humiliate you because you identify yourself as a Christian. How many of you have experienced that before? Oh, this one, Krifi. Oh, and they attempt to mock you. They are afraid of you, but they can't tell you. They attempt to mock you. So when they, they, somebody asks you, are you a Christian? No, you, you, I mean, you, 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 you hide yourself. Or sometimes they, they, they pretend as if they, they are not part of us. He's taking away your faith. Fight for your faith. Yes, I am. I'm a Christian. And I'm not a 
ashamed of it. Fight for your faith. Fight. Don't allow anyone to take your faith from you. Because if he takes your faith, he's taking your life. Hallelujah. May you defend your faith in the name of Jesus. May you keep your faith in the name of Jesus. The second battle that you need to fight. Fight for your brethren. I'm going to say some serious things here. I trust, I pray that God will give us time. Amen. I'm going to say some uh, serious things tonight. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse number 8 going downwards. In fact, the Bible said, Sambalat and Tobiah rose up against the children of Israel when they began to build the wall and they saw that the breaches in the wall were being stopped. The Bible said they gathered the people and uh, they uh, rose up against them and they plotted to come against them and slay them to cause the work to cease. To cause the work to cease. Then the verse number 14 of Jeremiah chapter 8, uh, Nehemiah chapter 8, the Bible, verse number 13. Verse number 13. Therefore, I set, set I in the lower places behind the wall, on the higher places, even the people, I even set the people after their families with their sword, their spears, and their bows. Verse 14. Now, if the Bible is yours, take note of verse number 13. And I looked and I rose up and said unto the nobles and unto the rulers and unto the rest of the people, be not afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brethren, fight for your son, sons, fight for your daughters, fight for your wives, fight for your houses. Now the Bible said, Nehemiah did something very prophetic. The Bible said he set the people in their families. In their families. Because in a warfare, if nothing is at stake, you don't really fight. You don't really fight. So he set them by families. Then the Bible said, he told them, fight for your brothers. Fight for your children. Fight for your sons. Fight for your wives. Fight for your husband. Now hear me. Then he said, in every family, he gave them their, verse 13, you can go there, their swords, their spears, their arrows. Every family must have a sword. Every family must have a spear. Every family must have an arrow, a bow and arrow. This time will not permit me to go deep into this. But the sword is the word of God. Every family must have a word over the family with which they wage war with. There must, be a, there must be a word of God over your family with which you will wage war. For instance, priesthood. If the covenant of, the, of God in the family is priesthood, you take the word, you wage a good war. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. There is a word of, of, of a word or the word of God over every family. Every family, every people. That is why even a church as a family, every church has a word. Every church has a, a message because God gives every family a sword. Hallelujah. Amen. Then a spear. A spear is symbolic for strength, for skill, for power. It's symbolic for strength, for skill, for power. So in every family, there must be men of strength or strong men in the family who will rise up from time to time to defend the family. My God. 
There must be men skillful in battle in every family. Oh, tonight somebody will fight a good fight. In every family, there must be some or one in the family that is skillful in battlefield. That is able to stand and to wage war and to fight. And the bow and arrow that takes opposition that is far. There are some oppositions that are close, but there are some that are far. That one we reach them with a bow and arrow. The biblical word for those people is called archers. They shoot, shoot at the enemy that is coming, the enemy that is forming. They dismantle and disintegrate the cloud that is forming against them. Then the Bible said, he told them, fight for them. Fight for your brothers. Fight for your children. Fight for your wives. Fight for your husband. Fight for them. Listen, I'm going to tell something. If you take it, God will, God will bless you. You must fight for your family. God positioned you in the family because he knew you could fight. Don't allow Satan in the family to destroy every good thing in the family. It is your responsibility to make sure your children go to heaven. And therefore you must fight. It is your responsibility. Fight for them. And everybody will be watching. And then the devil will have his way. And the devil will win the battle. Win the battle. The devil will win the battle. Because he will come in and destroy everything. Fight for the family. Sometimes poverty, he comes in the family as poverty. And nobody is able to lift their head in the family. Then we go to church and go home. And we go to church and go home. The mother is dying. The father is dying. Everybody is desperate. Someone is desperate. One day I watched a, 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 a short video years ago. And he said, I was so sad. A, a, a woman like that, a woman, and it looks like she was work, uh, working in a poultry farm. And the video that came was that she had taken eggs, egg, in her pocket. And this, I mean, a woman, uh, if you see the woman, she's not a thief. But, it, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying, I don't know her, but probably she's not a thief. But out of distress, might have taken some eggs for food. How much is an egg? How, why was someone, a woman, I mean, a nice woman like a 40s or this, uh, that probably she has children in the home. You see, poverty can bring you to um, a point that you'll be humiliated. And sometimes we watch the brothers fail. We watch the sons fail. We watch the sisters fail. We watch our mothers fail. And there is a continuity of poverty in the family. And there is no one, no one willing to rise up and fight against it. So Nehemiah said, I set them by family so that they will see. Then I told them, fight for your family. It could be that you are the one that God set in the family to break poverty. It could be that you are the one that God set in the family to break the chain of poverty. Rise up and fight. Hallelujah. Rise up and fight. Stop sleeping. Rise up and fight. Rise up and fight. Recently a man of God was telling me. I met him in Kumasi. He said he has a pastor friend. Nobody has built. Nobody has bought a land. Nothing in the family. Then he said one day, he got the money. The money was not enough. He said, I'm going far away 
to buy a land and I believe that when I buy this land, that curse will break. So he went and he said, I don't need the land, but I just want, I don't have money to buy, but I want, I want to buy the land for the devil to know that I have broken the curse. He bought the land and things opened. Now he has lands in Accra, Kumasi, everywhere. The problem in the family is land. I can't buy land in Kumasi. Wherever, if, it is land. It is land. It, wherever you buy it, it is land. He said, I will buy it and break the curse. Listen, there are some of you who must rise up and fight and break the curse. Break the curse of poverty in the house. The curse of, of poverty in the home, in the family. There are people that must rise up and break the curse of sickness. And disease, they call, call it what? Hereditary diseases. How come when we uh, we, we are covenanted in the blood of Jesus, then what affects one? Come to this. And no. 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 You rise up. There are people who must fast and break it. There are people who must wage a good warfare and break it. There are people who must commit themselves. I told God, Lord, I will not, not be an ordinary pastor. Then I won't. Listen, I said, whatever there is in God, I must see. I must see. I must know. Hallelujah. Amen. It's not just by talk. Not that I love to preach. No. Whatever there is in God, I must know it. And it comes with determination. Someone who is determined to enter certain heights and levels in God. And it doesn't come easy. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Whatever there is in God, I must see. I must know. I must know him. I must know him. The way you love to sleep, you can't change the story. The way you love sleep, you can't change the story. Rise up and fight. He put them by the families so that when you see your wife, you will rise. When you see your son and the devil is trying to destroy, you will rise up. When you see your mother, your father, you will rise up and wage a good war. And if you don't rise, when you see people like that, the Bible said, your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, if you see them perishing and you won't lift a finger, then something is wrong with you. Then something is wrong with you. Sometimes what troubles them is not them. It's the devil. Fight against what is behind them. Peter stood, pulled Jesus aside and said, Jesus, you are, don't say that thing again. You are not going to die. Jesus looked at Peter. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. Not Peter. Satan was standing right behind him. Satan was standing behind Peter. So Jesus said, get thee off, Satan. Get away, Satan. Not Peter. Because Satan was standing behind Peter and telling Peter, tell Jesus that you are not going to die. So Jesus did not fight Peter. Jesus fought Satan. Sometimes we must rise in the family. You could see somebody, a brother or a sister or a this and that. Sometimes it's Satan. Rise up and fight them. Set them by the families. Fight for your brothers. Fight for your brethren. Fight for them. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You see, the reason why many people don't fight is that when you are fasting, they are eating. And sometimes when you are doing some spiritual exercise, you go into church, they are the same people laughing at you. Look at his shoe. But what you are doing is for them. I feel my bread. Because and you are fasting for the family. You are praying for the family. But Obu Abel, but the Bible said, fight for them. Fight for them. It's a good fight. I came to call people 
who will change the narrative of the family. I came to call men, irrespective of the issues and challenges and the difficulties, they will rise to the occasion and fight. They will rise to the occasion and fight. The Bible said, fight for them. From today, may you receive grace to fight. May you receive grace to break the poverty. May you receive grace to break the shame. May you receive grace to destroy the works of the devil. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Number three. Fight for the master's house. Fight for the master's house. Second Kings chapter 10. Verse number one to three. Fight for the master's house. The Bible said, and Ahab and 70 sons of Samaria and Jehu wrote letter and sent to Samaria unto the rulers of Jezreel, to the elders, and to them that brought Ahab's children, saying, now, as soon as this letter cometh to you, seeing your master's sons are with you, and there are with you chariots and horses, a fenced city also, and armor. Mm. Look, even out of the best and meetest of the master's son, and set him on his father's throne, and fight for your master's house. Hallelujah. The Bible said, fight for your master's house. Look for the one that is meet, that is set, and set him on the master's throne. Then fight for your master's house. I came to tell someone, there is one that is set on the master's throne. His name is Jesus. The Bible said, set him on his father's throne then fight for your master's house set Jesus on his father's throne in the church set Jesus on his father's throne then fight for your master's house set Jesus on his father's throne in, the, in your house and fight for your master's house. Fight for it. Fight for your master's house. Fight for your master's house. Today many people don't care about the church. Because they see church as pastor. The church is Jesus. They don't fight. They don't do what they are supposed to do. Sometimes they don't do it joyfully. Because there is no fight in them. They are not willing to fight for their master's house. The Bible said in Matthew 21 verse number 2 of Jesus entered the temple and the Bible said he overturned the tables of those who sold and bought in the house of God. That was his father's house. Jesus walking as a man went into the temple of God cast out all of them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of money changers and the seat of them that sold doves in the church, in the temple, the master's house. The master's house. The things that concerns the work of God. The Bible said fight for it. Fight for it. Fight for it. People will go to church and they don't care. Whatever happens should happen. I mean, I've just come to sit and I'm, I don't, I'm not, I, I just came. They are even lucky that I came to church. They are lucky that I came to church to come and meet Jesus. They are lucky. Jesus is lucky that I came to church. But the Bible said, fight for your master's house. Fight for Anything that is wrong or not going well or something that is destroying the church, if you can keep quiet, if you can hold your peace for the church to disintegrate, 
for something which is God to be destroyed, something is wrong with your Christian life. Something is wrong with your Christian life. Sometimes there will be little arguments that you know that you know that could turn into turmoil and destroy God's church. And you can sit idle on concern. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. You must be emotional about it. You, you, um, you, your heart must be in it. Because you don't want the house of God to be destroyed. It's the master's house. Anything that defames Jesus. The Bible said, and the fame of him went run about the region. I'm talking about Jesus. Anything that would defame him. Anything that would destroy the reputation of Jesus. You don't watch. You fight for it. You fight for your master's house. I pray that may God raise people. May God raise young men and young women who will love the word of work of God. Who will love the cause of the kingdom and fight with their lives and lay their lives down for the kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that in this generation God will raise young men and young women who will be passionate about the things of God. Passionate about the things of God and will fight for the house of God in the name of Jesus. I pray for God to raise a people who will go out of religion and step into true love of God and step into true love and people who genuinely love Jesus and people who love Jesus with their heart and people who are passionate about their love and people who are zealous about their love for Jesus and about the cause of the kingdom who cannot watch and people who cannot watch who cannot watch evil to propagate in the house of God my God fight for your master's house and I want to tell you this before I go to number four there is a master's house that sometimes many people do not recognize. The Bible said, know ye not that your bodies are the temples of the Holy Ghost. If we call the walls and building temples, the Bible said your body is a temple. And the Bible said, fight for your master's house. Enthrone Jesus in this temple and fight for your master's house. Keep this body. Keep it for Jesus. Keep it for Jesus. Sometimes it beats my imagination. I can't even put my understanding to this. Wow. Why someone, Holy Ghost filled, a lover of Jesus, Holy Ghost filled, will go and lay his body in the Holy Ghost down for an infidel to touch. is dwelling in this temple. This body is holy. The body you are carrying is holy. It's God's temple. The Bible said you are not of your own. It's God's temple. Your body is God's temple. God is in it. God is in your body. Keep it for God. And to keep, you must fight. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. From today, somebody will fight. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. My God. Mm. Number four. Fight the battles of the Lord. Fight the battles of the Lord. First Samuel 25 verse 28. In First Samuel chapter 25, the Bible said, David was angry with Nabal and decided that the night, that night, Nabal and everyone around his life will be destroyed. He was angry. Then the Bible said, Abigail came to David and then spoke these words unto David. He said, 
I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thy handmaiden, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure house. Because my Lord, which is David, fighted the battles of the Lord, and evil has not been found in thee all thy days, all the days. Verse 29. Yet a man is risen to pursue thee, which is Nebab, who is risen to pursue David, and to seek thy soul. But the Lord, but the soul of the, my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life with the Lord thy God, and the soul of thy enemies, them shall he sling out as out of the middle of a sling. Abigail came and told David, listen, do no harm to neighbor. For you, you fight the lost battles. You, David, you fight the lost battle. So the Lord will fight for you. He said, you fight the lost battle. And someone has risen against you. Don't fight him. God would throw him out as a stone in a sling. He will sink. But after, as for you, you will be established. And you will have bundle of life. Amen. What he is saying is that if you fight God's battles, God will fight your battles. If you fight God's battles, God will fight your battles. If you learn to fight the fight or the battles of God. Now in 1 Samuel chapter 17, David, David and Goliath, the Bible said Goliath defiled the armies of the Lord for 40 days. When David came to meet Goliath, in verse number 43, the Bible said Goliath cursed David with his gods. Then David began to say that I will kill you today. I will give your bodies to the vultures or the bears of the sky and the beast. And he said, I will smite you with thy own sword. And in the verse number 47, he says something that is very important. And all his assembly shall know that the Lord saved not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. The battle, it was Goliath who was coming. Goliath was roaring. But the Bible said, David said, the battle is the Lord's. It's God's battle. But I am standing here. It's God's battle. But I am facing you. This battle is God's. But I am facing you. So if any man fights God's battle for him, God will fight for him. Hallelujah. Amen. This battle, he told Goliath, it is God's battle. You see me. Because I'm fighting God's battle for him. I began to tell David, because you fight the lost battles, the Lord will fight for you. And in 10 days, Nebar died. 10 days, Nebar died. The Bible said, and God smoothed him. So God killed Nebar. Because, and David said, no, I will not fight God's battle. In 10 days, the Bible said, God smoothed Nebar and he died. If anyone stands to fight God's battles, God will fight for him. What am I talking about? There is an arch enemy of God. It is God. His name is called Satan. It is God who, is, who must fight that battle. But if any man stands and says that God, I will fight that enemy for you, God fights for him. So winning is God's battle. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. It was God who came to die. Then he said, go. Anyone who has learned the mystery of soul winning, to win souls for God, God fights for him. You can't be a soul winner and die. Check the, old, the, the evangelists, the soul winners. Check the, their ages. Check, apart from those who were martyred, check their age, ages in a recent history. All the, all, every one of them died above 80. 80, 89. Bill Graham, 99 years. They live, they, if they want to even go, they, don't, they can't go. They, they, because God satisfies them with long life. Amen. You can't win souls and perish. 
It is not possible because you are fighting God's battle and God must fight for you. Hallelujah. Amen. If you begin to, or if you give your life to do the work of God, listen, you don't need to be an apostle to do the work of God. You don't need to be a bishop to do the work of God. You can do the work of God as you, as you are with your same title, with your no title. Your no title. You can do the work of God. If you begin to do the work of God, God will fight your battles for you. Many people are fighting and losing their battles because they are not fighting the lost battle. But the day you begin to fight God's battle, God will step in for you and God will fight. I speak over somebody's life. I speak over somebody's life. The Bible said his name is called El Kibor. His name is called El Kibor. May El Kibor stand and fight your battles for you in the name of Jesus. My God, my God, I pray for someone who will position himself, who will position herself between God and God's enemies and say unto God, I am fighting your enemies. I am going after anyone that hates my God. Anyone that is the wants to destroy my God, I will fight it. And may God stand in for you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. All power in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. Go, I am with you. Go and fight and I'm with you. So if a man decides to fight God's battles, God fights for him. I pray from today, may God fight for you. I said today, may God fight for you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Ah, we're going to pray. It is a good fight. It's a good fight to fight the Lord's battle. It's a good fight to fight for your brothers. It's a good fight to fight for your faith. It's a good fight. It's a good fight. Number five. Ah, Jesus. Hmm. In fact, if I only, if you only preached number five, you would have been a blessing. I'm going to say some deep things here. Number five. Fight for the inheritance. Fight for the inheritance. Fight for the inheritance. Now, when you come to the natural realm, inheritance is what the Father has given for a family of a people. The provisions of a father. Fight for it. I'm going to say some deep things here. Please do not forget. Joshua chapter 1. We are reading through verse 2 to verse number 6. Please do not forget. Mm. Moses, my servant, is dead now. Therefore, arise. Moses, my servant, is dead now. Therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan, thou and all these people, unto the land which I do give to them even to the children of Israel. Now, if the Bible is yours, underline the word, the land which I do give. The land which I do give. The land which I do give. My servant is dead. Every place that the soul of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you as I said unto Moses, every place where the soul of thy foes shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. Verse number four. Hmm. From, then he gives demarcation, from the wilderness, ah, I've given you the wilderness, <laughs> and unto the rivers, and unto the land, unto the sea towards the going down of the sun shall be your coast. Have you seen these key words? The wilderness, what I'm giving you, the wilderness, the rivers, the land, the sea, I'm giving it 
unto you. So even the wilderness is uh, uh, symbolic for distress or for pain. And even that the Bible said, I have given all things under your command. Trouble shall not prevail. Even the wilderness I have given into you. The place of want I have handed over to you. I have given that to you. Now the verse number five, then the Bible said, there shall not be any man be, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. I will not fail thee nor forsake thee. Number six, then he said, be strong and be courageous. For unto these people shall thou, thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Now hear me. I, I pray that you receive it. I pray that you receive this. The Bible said in Deuteronomy 31 verse number 7. Is it 7 or 17? Verse number 7. Moses said unto Joshua. Moses called Joshua and said unto him, In the sight of all Israel, be strong and be of good courage. For thou must go with these people unto the land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit. Now hear me carefully. He said, the land that our, their fathers swore unto them, cause them to inherit. Cause them to inherit. The land their fathers swore unto, the, the Lord swore unto their fathers, cause them to inherit. Now say promise. So what God swore unto them, was a promise. There is a difference between promise and there's a difference between manifestation. Now, when you come to Joshua chapter 1, verse number 3, the Bible said, Arise, go. The land that I do give, so it is present, I'm giving it unto you now. This land was a promise to your fathers. This land that I'm talking about, this blessing was a promise. But he said, Moses, my servant is dead. Arise, go over this land, thou and all the people, unto the land which what? I do give. I do give unto them. I do. So now God is giving it. It was a promise. Now it's in the hand of God. And he said, I am giving it. It was a promise. It's in my hand. I'm giving it. The time has come for me to give it. It was a promise. The time is ripe. I'm now giving it unto you. Then he said, I will be with you. He has not changed. His name has always been Emmanuel, God with you. So that God, Emmanuel, is still with us. Is someone with me? Amen. He's still with us. So his name has not changed. There was a promise. I am ready to give. Then he said, be strong and fight. The promise. There is a promise. A promise that I have promised to give you. But now I am ready. I am with you. And he said, be strong. Fight and inherit. Then I realized that. I've heard people say, where the soles of my feet shall tread upon. I possess. They have tread upon many places. They have not possessed any. Where the soles of my feet shall tread upon. Lord, I possess it. Lord, I possess it. The soles of my feet and the, their soles are treading on many places. They have not possessed. And I realized, hear me. It is the souls of warriors that possess lands. It is the souls of warriors. You can dream it. It won't happen. But that one is for warriors, those who know how to fight. Because when a warrior passes through a land, you know he was there. You know a man came there. You know someone of authority, someone of power passed through. If a man of power passed through a land, you know. You know. Hallelujah. You can pass through a land without leaving a footprint. Your soul have not been there. 
but a warrior soul will leave prints on the land. I came to speak to somebody to possess the inheritance, to possess God's promise, the promise over your head. Ah, you must be a warrior. You must learn to fight. You must learn to wage war because those who possess land are warriors. Oh, the way you back down and back off and back out and keep quiet and keep out of every good thing. You are not going to possess it. Liars keep territories because they know how to fight. They know how to fight. Now hear me. Listen to me carefully. Whenever God's people listen to me, this one the Lord told me or showed me and I want to tell you whenever God's people have to dwell in Egypt he sends Joseph ahead of them when God's people have to dwell in Egypt he sends Joseph ahead of them the Bible said Joseph said God sent me ahead of you to preserve you a posterity so God sent Joseph ahead of them. Now, who is Joseph? What is the kind of Joseph? Egypt is the world. There are many things in, uh, uh, in this world. If a Christian has to be there, or Christians have to be there, God will always send a Joseph ahead. For instance, there are certain companies and organizations there are courts and occults and groupings and this and uh, I mean cartels and that and that and that so Christians don't survive there. The young lady goes to the workplace, three months she's pregnant. Two months have been used by four or five managers. So in places like that, God sends Joseph there to prepare the place so that the children of God who will come will live in prosperity in the same land. So there are certain offices that you work. People enter in a the place. There are places when you have the Josephs ahead of you, you will prosper. Because you will eat free. You will survive there free. You will live as a king. Was even the people in Egypt were begging for food. Joseph's family were eating free. They were selling their lands for food. The family of Joseph were eating for free. So in, if God's people have to live in Egypt, God will always send Joseph ahead of them. He will always send Joseph ahead of them. The kind of Josephs ahead of them. The kind of Josephs are the people who can endure, who can fight back, who can preserve, protect themselves. It doesn't matter prison. It doesn't matter challenges. They can survive the environment and then break through. The kind of Joseph are the people who will sleep one night as a prisoner, the following night as a prime minister. Ah. Hallelujah. Amen. One night, slept as a prisoner. The following night, be, be in prison, convicted of rape, slept in prison the following night. A prime minister. So that all the people who destroys others will now become his subjects. And then God's people will have someone in the realm of authority and they will be preserved. These are the kinds of Joseph. So if God's people, listen, some of you will complete school and go and work in uh, at places. God must send a Joseph ahead of you because he knows that you are coming. God will always send Josephs who will preserve you in the company, in that workplace. God will send Joseph, sometimes even in families. God sends Josephs in the family to preserve you. Hear me. When you have to come out of Egypt, because sometimes Egypt becomes unbearable. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Sometimes it gets to a point God must take you out. It gets to a place, a time that God must take you out. If God 
must take his people out of Egypt. You don't need Joseph. You need Moses. You need the kind of Moses. The kind of Moses are warriors. They are terrorists. They enter Pharaoh's house before they leave Pharaoh's children are dead. They are terrorists. Spiritual godly terrorists, God's arrows. They come to the street, they come and they begin to scatter until you will let God's people go. So when you come, when God is taking you out of Egypt, God will always send Moses your way. The kind of Joseph is like the kind of Daniel. If you don't have Daniel in Babylon, you will die there. The kind of Joseph is, is like Mordecai. If Mordecai is not in Shushan, the whole people will die. So God sends them there. But the people who take God's people, they are like Nehemiah, the Ezra's, the Moses, the kind of Moses. They will come and terrorize your people, your nation until you let God's people go. So God will give you a Moses to take you out. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Now, the assignment of Moses is to take you out of Egypt and bring you to the borders of the promised land. Hear me. When you enter the promised land, Every family must fight for their land. Every family. The Bible said, Deuteronomy 31 verse 7, cause them to inherit. Cause them to inherit. I have brought you here. Arise. Go over Jordan. Arise. Go over Jordan. Possess the land. Wherever the source of your feet will go. He said, be strong fight. The land is yours. The inheritance is yours. It is a promise, but it comes by a fight. It is a promise. I'm ready to give, but you hold it by a fight. You cannot hold, take it lying down. You cannot take it sleeping. It is a promise. I have promised it, but you come and take it by a fight because squatters are on every man's promised land. Squatters are on every man's promised land, and therefore you must arise and fight the inheritance. The inheritance, the father's promise, the father's provision, the father's promise. Ah, I'm going, it's expedient for me that I go, that the spirit will come. The Bible calls it the promise. Is the Father's promise. Is the Lord's promise. The Holy Ghost. It takes a certain fight. It takes a certain fight to walk in the anointing. When he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and he gave gifts unto man. It takes a certain fight. Sometimes it takes a war of prayer and fasting. God, I am ready. God, I need your anointing. God, I need to walk in the supernatural. God, I am thirsty for it. My generation must see the glory and the power. My generation must experience the glory and the power. It's God's promise, but it takes someone who is ready to possess that inheritance. It's God's promise. It's God's promise. He's ready to give it, but someone must arise. Someone must arise and fight for it. I came to call someone who is ready to take on the inheritance. I came to call somebody who is ready to take the inheritance in the name of Jesus. And I speak by the power of the Holy Ghost. You will not be ashamed if you rise for the inheritance in the name of Jesus. My God, my God, when you are reading the scriptures, you will chance upon something that is called a promise. God's prophecy. I am the Lord that healed thee. It's God's promise. Someone must arise and take it. Someone must arise and fight for it. And fight. I am the Lord who giveth thee power to make wealth. Oh, 
Makido Grondoski de Gadaha, Rapaki Desconoya. Listen, it is the souls or the feet of warriors that possesses the inheritance that will possess the inheritance today in the name of Jesus may you arise in the power and the might of God and possess your inheritance in the name of Jesus oh there are times God will raise Joseph there are times that God will raise Moses Joseph is to prepare for the children of God to live in Egypt. Moses comes to take the children of God out of Egypt. But there are times that God raises the kind of Joshua to cause men to inherit. My God, my God, I stand here in that order to cause someone to inherit the promise of God over your life. Whatever God has spoken over your life, that is called a promise. Today I stand in the power and in the order Makatus in the order, in the mantle of Joshua to cause God's children to inherit their land, to inherit their promise in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The season of wilderness is over. They stayed in the wilderness. They stayed in the wilderness 40 years. But the Bible said the time has come. I am ready to give unto them. Rise and fight. There is a day, there is a moment that you must transition from the wilderness to the promised land. It is the day that you are determined to fight for the promise. I came to call someone. The days of the wilderness is over. You must be tired of the wilderness. Your season of the promised land has come. I came to call people. I came to call the sons and daughters of God. This is your time. This is your season to inherit the land in the name of Jesus. May you inherit your land. May you fight for your land. May you inherit your land in the name of Jesus. Any promise over your head, may you inherit it. I came to cause you to inherit. I came to cause you to inherit. In the name of Jesus, I came to stir up a fight in you. My God, my God, don't be satisfied with the, with, with, with the wilderness. I came to stir up a fight in you. The promised land is yours. The promised land is yours. It is time to give it. It is time to give it. In the name of Jesus. Come and begin to lift up your voice. Kanoske ni mahaya. Roshana mahaya. Now hear me. I'm just going to brush over this and we pray. Sunday evening, we will enter in what God has called us to do. Mm. Don't sit. Stand on your feet. Fight for the prophetic word. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. Fight for the prophetic word. This charge is a charge. I commit unto thee, son, Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before thee, which went on before thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. According to the prophecies that went on before you, that you may wage a good warfare, that thou mightest war a good warfare. People receive prophecies and they forget. You speak to them and they forget it. Some people have swallowed their prophecies and it is not coming to be. I write mine down. Sometimes I open it and I begin to pray into it because it is a prophecy. It went before me. I must see it. Between prophecy and manifestation is a warfare. Between prophecy, manifestation is warfare. You don't receive prophecy and sleep over it. You will not see it. You will not see it come to pass. You need to wage war for the prophecy. Wage war. People have 10 years prophecy, which have none of them, not even one has come to pass. 
prophecies went on before you, wage a good warfare, contend for the prophecy that you may see it. Any prophetic word that came over you, even the day that you were born, even when you were young, today in the name of Jesus, may you begin to see the fulfillment of those prophecies in the name of Jesus. May you begin to see the fulfillment of these words, these prophetic words over your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Number seven, because of time. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse number 7. Koruski di brandoske nea. Number 7. I call it fight to finish. Fight to finish. The Bible said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my cause. I have kept the faith. Now, three things. I don't have time. I would have preached on this one alone that I mentioned here. Number one, he said, I have fought. Number two, he said, I have finished. Number three, he said, I have kept. These three things work together. They go together. If you fail in one, you failed all. If you don't fight, you will not finish. It begins from there. If you don't fight, you will not finish. It begins from there. There are people who fight, but they, will not, they don't finish. They fight some, and they leave some. Sometimes when God sets you in the family, there are people with multiple troubles in the family. Poverty is there. Sickness is there. This is there. That is there. And that is there. They fight one and they leave the rest. They don't finish. Paul said, I fought. I finished. God placed you in the family to finish everything there. Fight and finish it. Fight and finish. Fight and finish. There are people that are carrying multiple assignments. Multiple destinies assignments. I tell you, there are people who are called to be preachers, who are called to be song ministers, who are also called to be businessmen. There are people like that. Multiple, endowed with multiple grace. Multiple. They take one line. They never finish. They fight, but they don't finish. They fight. They don't finish. Then the Bible said, I have kept. What has he kept? The faith. What is that talking about? There are people who fight and what they are trying to do, they finish it, but they don't finish it in the faith. For instance, someone may be fighting poverty, will be fighting poverty, uh, so things are not turning up the right way. Then he will go, to, um, go to and join an occultic group and still go to, so then poverty, he gets a lot of money. Poverty is gone. But they fight, they have finished the course, they have not kept the faith. They don't finish it in the faith. It is waste. It is waste. So whatever we begin to fight, we must finish it. But when you finish it, you must make sure the boundaries are the boundaries of the Christ. The boundaries of the word of God. You finish it in Christ. You finish it in the faith. There is no need to make money, which is not God's way. No need. It's useless. Useless. I mean, you can, you can become a millionaire overnight in today's world, in today's social media world. You can strip your body, start going naked, take pictures on social media, people will come after you. Oh, wow, and likes and this and that. All of a sudden, you're a millionaire. Become a professional prostitute. It's like that. But you're not doing it in Christ. So you've not kept the faith. You've not kept the faith. Your target is to destroy poverty. You might have destroyed poverty, but not in the faith. So the Bible said, I fought the fight. I finished the course. I have kept the faith and therefore a crown. Therefore.
before the crown. That is when you can receive God's crown. The fight to finish. Don't start when you don't want to finish it. Don't start. You came to church because you want to see the Savior one day. One day. You want to be with God in heaven. Don't come to church when you don't want to go to heaven. No. If you don't have the mind to be with God in heaven, what, what, what use is it? You want to dress and come to church, but you love hell. No. Make up your mind to fight and finish. Fight and finish. Fight and finish. Finish it in the faith. Finish it in Christ. Finish it. Somebody's life is changing. Somebody's story is changing. You will fight and finish. I speak over somebody's life. You will fight and finish. In the name of Jesus. I want you to lift up your voice. We are going to pray because of the time. But pray to the Lord. Lord, the faith. The Bible said fight the fight of faith. You want to fight this fight of faith. God give me grace to fight. Grace to fight. Grace to fight the fight of faith. The grace to fight. fight. The grace to fight. Lift up your voice and begin to speak to the Lord. Ramanos, Kenya, 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 Ramanos, Kenya,